Good afternoon. Uh, I'm Céline Mougeno, and I'm, um, I joined the school actually quite recently after I spent um, about nine years in Japan. I will talk about uh, design studies and how design studies can be used to uh, innovate. Uh, actually, uh, in 1969, Herbert Simon uh, produced, uh, wrote a book which is called The Sciences of the Artificial. And in design studies, we, we actually consider it's uh, the birth of uh, the field. Uh, Herbert Simon is a Nobel Prize in economics, and he worked in many uh, different fields, AI, uh, decision making, problem solving. Uh, he was talking in 69 about global warming already. So he's one of the pioneers in the field. Uh, the field design studies is quite recent. Uh, but it has an impact on all uh, types of businesses, as I will show today. Uh, so design studies is about looking at design as a process. So in uh, Sam Cooper's talk before, we, uh, we talked about the outcome of a design process, which can be batteries, for instance. Design studies is about uh, looking at the design process from an ID to this type of outcome. So it can be batteries, it can be uh, any type of artifact, it can be a system, it can be a service. So looking at this design process, we hope to understand how actually people design and we uh, wish to use this knowledge for improving the process. Uh, so in these two examples, so these are a recent examples in companies uh, at <coughs> GE, General Electric, uh, on the left. Actually, uh, GE uh, used a new way of working, which uh, they call that fast works, uh, where they actually <coughs> asked all their employees to work all together, so not in siloed functions, but all together to address a client need. And the key thing is about looking at the client need, uh, even for people in R&D, for instance, which might feel a bit far away from uh, the end users or the clients. Uh, so they asked all people in their companies to join, to join projects uh, in a non-siloed way and work together in a, a user uh, client-centric process. Uh, Deutsche Bank, in the same way, uh, asked uh, their employees to actually go through their uh, customer's experience and use the services Deutsche Bank is designing for the clients so that everyone in the company is actually uh, aware of the user experience, the user uh, the pain points in the customer journey, as we call it, um, and, and use that knowledge and the reflection on this experience for actually uh, creating uh, outcomes and services that would be useful for the, uh, the clients. So in these uh, two examples, what we see is uh, that in, some, um, in any types of industries, a uh, design-based approach can be used. And we're in interesting, interested in using this design-based approach uh, in any type of field in which we want to innovate. Um, so recently, um, actually, it's been shown that having a design mindset or following a design process favors innovation. Uh, across a variety of industries. So this is uh, probably people in the back cannot read the references. This is the report, the yearly report from Boston Consulting Group about the most innovative companies. And uh, in, so the study showed that uh, these most innovative companies, like the 50 most innovative companies in the world, uh, share some common points, which are actually about a design mindset and using a design-based approach. So these characteristics are, um, sorry, uh, following a customer-centric approach. So as I described before, uh, expecting that everyone in the company is actually 
uh, having a custom, some interest in what the customer is experiencing, uh, having an agile and cross-functional process, so uh, having people from different departments actually addressing the needs of the customers all together, uh, and other characteristics, but these are um, mostly referring to a design mindset and a design-based approach. In another recent interesting report, um, it was shown that uh, design mindset actually has a business value and can increase revenue. So this is a report by McKinsey that was released a few uh, weeks ago about the business value of design. And uh, in the study, um, it was shown that across a variety of industries, uh, so that was uh, medical uh, device, design of medical devices, retail banking, and um, I forgot the third one, which was more like industrial um, fields. Um, McKinsey showed that um, the companies which had uh, a design mindset and followed design approach could actually increase their revenue. So they had a 30, oh, sorry, 32% uh, increase in their revenue and a 56% uh, uh, increase in the uh, total returns to the shareholders. Uh, how um, McKinsey did this study, actually they looked at some uh, in the, uh, the, what they call design index scores and their, uh, their correlation with business performances. And in the design index scores, for instance, they looked at how uh, the, the employees, like every single employee in the company was exposed to the customer needs, uh, how uh, the customer feedback was used in the, uh, the development processes and whether there was uh, an actually effective um, uh, use of the customer feedback in, in all uh, development processes in the company. So there was a strong correlation between uh, a customer-centric approach and uh, a good an increase in the business performances, sorry. So what we see is that uh, design is, is not only about designing a uh, nice sofa or fashion design and so on. Design is a, a process that can be used in any type of industry and this is what we are um, actually looking at uh, in the school. And especially uh, we, Oh, okay, there's something missing here, I will explain. Uh, we look at how design uh, can uh, be used in innovation processes, and to do that, we study the uh, socio-cognitive aspects of design. So it means how people collaborate with others when they design, uh, what kind of uh, vocabulary they use, uh, what uh, ideas they produce when we mix different functions in the collaboration and so on. So we observe uh, design collaborations and based on these observations we create tools that can support collaboration. So for instance um, we look at how um, the collaboration with the clients, the end users, can be facilitated uh, across disciplines, across functions in a company, and also across cultures uh, when we are dealing with projects uh, uh, in different locations <coughs> where people from different cultures have to collaborate. So here you can see an example of um, a project we did with a global leader in beauty and cosmetic products where uh, we switched from a very linear process um, to a um, design-based process. So the very linear traditional process is that marketing, the marketing department would do a market research and send their um, data and their request to the design and R&D department and then maybe test it with the end users. 
In a design-based approach, it's, it's more circular and across functions. And the, in, for instance, we organized open innovation uh, meetings where people from the marketing, R&D, design departments, and the final users would meet together and actually uh, generate ideas together. Uh, and this is, so if through this uh, process, actually the, uh, the company could generate uh, outcomes and products that were actually uh, what the, the end users uh, wanted. Uh, another project was about using virtual reality uh, for uh, supporting the collaboration between the designers and the end users uh, through, um, uh, so we used a tangible interface uh, that uh, to enable anyone without any technical skills, any, without any virtual reality skills, to actually um, change a virtual model. So it means even um, an end user without uh, the engineering skills could actually uh, make a representation of the product they wanted to uh, have or to create. So these projects are all about uh, innovation, which is the key thing in uh, implementing a design-based approach for innovation. And this uh, leads me, uh, yeah, and this, these are projects done in collaboration with uh, people in Japan um, and Europe. Uh, with different types of expertise, so uh, design and innovation, um, cognitive ergonomics, um, and also companies with an interest in uh, innovation activities. So I would like to conclude with a few questions related to uh, design-based and design-led innovation and collaboration. Uh, I, maybe we can discuss that in the Q&A session. How do you collaborate across functions and disciplines in your organization? Uh, are you creating the right environment for collaboration and growth of empathy? So empathy towards your uh, end, uh, end users and customers. How do you involve your end users, customers in your projects? Are they joining uh, you know, your innovation projects early in, in the process? What if you could envision futures together with your end, end users and customers? And I think that's the point for innovation, is about uh, being able to envision um, appealing futures together with the people you are innovating for. That's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you.